Welcome to the webinar. Thank you all for coming. Thank you also for sharing these events through the social networks, those of you who have done so. This is the first webinar of this series, and uh, we are very excited to present our audience with some of the books we have chosen to be on our book list. Today we will be discovering a recently published book titled Attacking Currency Trends by Mr. Greg Michalowski. This is, um, by the way, the link to the books section. Most of you are already familiar with today's author. He is the Chief Currency and Trading Analyst for FXDD, and he has been with FXDD since day one. Here at FX3.com, we're very lucky to have someone of his caliber teaching us. Someone who has many years of accumulated experience, not only in trading, but also in observing the retail traders' behavior. Greg Michalowski has done a lot of webinars at FX Street. Uh, if, uh, if you have never assisted one of uh, his webinars, take advantage of the recorded sessions. You can, uh, you can access them by, by visiting his uh, profile. There is a famous axiom all of you have surely heard of, which says the trend is your friend. For most day traders in the FX market, though, this axiom never becomes a reality. What's worse, trending conditions become an enemy for most aspiring traders. This is somehow paradoxical, isn't it? Especially in a time when technical analysis is a knowledge is something that anyone can learn. Unlike 100 years ago, in an era of big price manipulation, in a time when few regulations existed and a lot of insider trading was taking place, in its beginnings, technical analysis emerged as a method aimed to turn the uninformed players in the market into informed ones. And those who got it first made fortunes trading the markets. See, for example, Wyckoff. So why is it, is it today we aren't more cap capable in detecting and writing trends? People lose the most amount of money when the market is trending. This is something Greg stresses a lot in his teachings. It's simply a fact we can't ignore. It's also a reason why markets trend in the first instance, why markets overshoot to exuberance price levels. Most traders liquidate profits too early and let losing positions run, in the hope for a reversal. And uh, in a prolonged directional price movement, this means more and more people are stuck on the losing side until the balance of winning and losing positions becomes so big that any further price advance, however small, can trigger what is known as a cascading effect. This is, w this is one of the main reasons why often trends last longer than we expect. As a great technician, in his book, Greg Magalowski explains the usage of tools to gauge the market bias, and he does it by rescuing many almost forgotten basic tenets of technical analysis. One of these is the very fact that markets trend. This may sound simplistic, but as I've just mentioned, it, it has tremendous implications in terms of the lack of efficiency in the, in the markets. Another principle regaining importance in Greg's work is the concept of confirmation. This idea also goes back to the forefathers of Western technical analysis, see Charles Doe, Hamilton, that is, in order to qualify a trend as such, we need price confirming a series of other indicators. These other indicators and tools not only should define the trend in an unambiguous way, like uh, Greg says, but they also should help in defining the risk in every situation, a classical technical analysis. And that is the capacity to reduce the risk while aiming to make the most amount of money. There are a lot of common beliefs which um, which lead traders to demean price trends and, and 
search for more complicated values of, of generating income through trading. Most of these beliefs are so ingrained in our thinking that they become very difficult to detect. It's really not easy for us to become aware of them. For instance, if I believe that markets are totally random, adhering thus to the random walk theory, then I'm prone to think that the price movement has gone too far and that the market is about to turn, or even worse, since markets are random and anything can happen, I will try my 50% luck in catching a price move and I'll enter, I will enter the market without a plan, without even any timing. And attacking currency trends precisely teaches you to choose the moment to act. A good thing about, another good thing I should say about this great educator is um, we have with us today and will be talking with us in a moment is that his teachings doesn't requ require you to use complex or even proprietary indicators to make it work. In his approach, he uses common technical indicators and tools, and each of them finds a proper function within his method, be it in a confirmation role or, or as a trigger in a The more critical minds in the audience may think that um, Greg's ideas are, are equiparable to, to the those theory not only in its basic tenets, but also in its uh, disadvantages, namely that it may lag in confirming the trend. But nothing is further from the truth. Greg's method is armed with tools to anticipate a currency trend. It's a strategical framework made for traders, one that goes beyond the, the, the analytical one we know from, from classical technical analysis. One more thing I would like to add, something I learned as a trader, is that having a plan to act upon when the market does what we expect it to do effectively reduces fear. And this is something you, you can learn by reading this book. I would encourage you to, uh, to read the book and also to follow the recorded webinars presented by Greg Michalowski. They go in parallel. And uh, it's a rare and perfect combination you can take advantage of. Greg's book, Attack Currency Trends, also shows the necessary rigor when speaking technically. With that, I mean the, the use of, of technical vocabulary, so the reader will be not confused with newly invented concepts. There is, there is really no need to invent nothing new in, in technical analysis but instead there is a real need to understand it, to understand technical analysis, at least as long as, as markets continue to, to trend. Let's welcome Greg to the room. I will pass now the, the microphone over to you, Greg. If the audience wants to, to ask the author any, any questions about the book or, or the method, please, please do so. Um, I really appreciate uh, this out, uh, opportunity to uh, be the uh, first uh, book uh, in your uh, series uh, to analyze uh, or to take a look at uh, what uh, traders and what uh, authors, uh, analysts uh, in the market are looking at and how they look look at the markets. I am, um, uh, as uh, as mentioned, my uh, my book. I, I had a, I had an approach. To the book, um, you know, just to give you a little background, uh, I was just uh, sitting at my desk one day and I got this email that just popped up on my screen from the people at Wiley Publishing and they said, and it was uh, very simple, it says, do you want to write a book? And, I was, and it took me about a second to re reply, yes. And uh, it, as, long, as fast as it takes me to write yes, that's how fast it was going back. And the reason why is because I, I've been able to over the last uh, oh, 10, 12 years uh, working at FXDD, been able to really see what traders do right and what they do wrong. And, I, and I've been able to see it in a market that you all out there are in, the re, as a part of, in the foreign exchange market as part as a retail foreign exchange trader. And by being able to see what you do right and what you do wrong, I was able to improve my uh, ideas and trading in the market. 
Uh, Gonzalo uh, said that I have a, you know experience in the market. That experience goes back 25 years. I've been with um, FXDD since its inception uh, in uh, 2001, and um, but my 20, my my 15 years or, or 14, 15 years prior to FXDD was from uh, working at Citibank, working at Credit Suisse First Boston, and from the trading perspective, from that institutional trading perspective, um, I that's where my foundation came from. But it wasn't until I started to work at FXDD that I really got to understand what the retail trader is thinking and this idea that um, traders don't do well trading the trends. Traders don't do well trading the trends. As uh, Gonzalo sa said, uh, th this um, is almost seems blasphemous in relation to that idea that the trend is your friend. That's the first thing we all learn, the trend is your friend. Yet, traders don't do well trading the trend. And so I started started this um, the book out um, by pledging to myself that I was going to make and write a book that was geared toward the retail trader. Now, I think institutional traders can learn from it as well. Don't get me wrong. And, and, and as uh, Gandala said, I use basic, simple, technical techniques and tools that um, are, you know, probably in the first 50 pages of any sort of technical trading uh, book that you have out there. It's not complicated, but that all goes into, comes back into the focus, uh, or one of the focuses of my book, and that is to build the trader's foundation. So the first part of the book is focused on building a foundation for retail traders with uh, things like a mission statement, things like a game plan, things like rules for trading, things like attributes for successful traders. These are all things that get uh, described in the book before you get to the point where you you start to look at the tools and how you're going to do it. And so the um, the book, um, I have a mission statement, and the mission statement is to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. To make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. Does that make sense? If we're in this market, we want to make as, as much money as we possibly can. Otherwise, don't trade the market. And this idea of the least amount of risk, a lot of retail traders get that idea wrong. They think that, hey, I got to, I got to leverage up. I got to have a lot of risk. I got to figure, you know, if I can't risk 100 pips on this trade, then I'm not a man or I'm not a woman. Um, uh, you know, I should be able to, uh, be able to weather this, you know, 100 pip move. Well, yeah, you know, that's all right. That's good. If people have questions right now, um, while, while people are logging in, why don't I take them? So, uh, why did, um, why did you choose a name attacking is what Boyke's uh, asking. And uh, the reason is because people tend, it, it's kind of counter to what I've, what I've learned, is that people tend not to attack uh, the cur currency trends. And you have to really, you have to be aggressive in a trend. Um, and because sometimes you don't, you don't get into a trend early on. Um, and you end up um, having to get on that trend while it's in motion, uh, and that is difficult to do. Uh, yeah, so I'll use, use a chart. Uh, or let me uh, get my uh, screen up here. This may work out even better. So um, as an example, um, th this, uh, this market here in the euro versus U.S. dollar, it's, it, it broke out moving fast to the downside. And if you're asleep, you're not, a, you know, you're not trading, you missed this opportunity, here, you have to attack the trend on any sort of, you know, pullback, and uh, so it takes a little bit. It takes some guts uh, to get back in that trend, and uh, as a result, uh, you do have to attack it when the market moves down here, here, and starts to, its trend to the downside here in the euro versus U.S. dollar. You have to, um, you know, you you have to. Uh, sometimes you have to attack it. Um, at a level that uh, maybe is not as good as uh, some other people, and uh, when when the trend does does uh, start up, uh, you have to take advantage of uh, some of the corrective moves as well and attack it there as well. Um, uh, so um, uh, that's um, that's what um, that's why I call it attacking currency trends. 
All right. Um, so, uh, yes, yes. In the introduction of the, of the book, you speak about the market profile. I thought it was a great ba backbone for the whole book. Could you expand a, a little on uh, that uh, idea of the market profile? That's um, for those people. I don't know how many people know about the market profile, but um, Cantal is, is right. Uh, the, the market profile was one of these foundations of my um, uh, of of my trading career, uh, and the market profile allowed me to recognize there are different types of markets. There are non-trending markets, there are normal markets, and there are trending markets. Those are basically the three types of markets that there are out there. And and by understanding just in 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 general um, that uh, what each of those markets represented, it gave me a better feel for how to approach trading a market. For an example, in a non-trending market, uh, what typically happens within the market profile is you, you develop a um, a um, you know, sort of a bell curve that's that's a very narrow info, narrow based, a low or a low to high trading range that's very narrow. Uh, lots of uh, trades around the mean, uh, you know, a, a single price. Um, and this non-trending aspect of the market was a signal to traders that the market was in equilibrium, that the market was in balance, if you will. The buyers and sellers were fighting each other, and they, they you know, one was saying it's going up, one saying going down, and both of them were so um, uh, focused on their position that it didn't go anywhere. The market stayed there. But event <coughs> eventually what happens in markets is, um, and what I learned from the market profile, was non-trending transitions into trending. And that is, as Gonzalo says, a backbone for trading. That is a way that traders can start to anticipate a trend. E example, let's look at this chart here in the euro versus U.S. dollar. The market is in a narrow range here. This is a non-trending ra range, a non-trending market. And if I were to look at this from a market profile standpoint, it would be, um, it, and for those, you know, I don't want to go into the details of market profile. There will be a lot of A, Bs, and Cs, and Ds, and Es, and all, all uh, at the same area, same level. And the, the, the histogram of, of uh, prices would be like a, a big, uh, big uh, elongated tri triangle here. You can see that in, the in, a, in this chart here. You can see the market is non-trending, going from resistance to support, from resistance to support. Oh, it tries to break to the upside. <laughs> it can't. Uh, it, it finds an extreme. It comes back down to support. It goes back up to resistance, comes down to support. Is this saying something to you folks? Is this saying that the market is non-trending? What's this moving average doing? This is a 100-bar moving average. What's this moving average doing? It's going sideways. It's rising here, and the market catch price catches up with the with price. And then for two days here, the 100-bar moving average. This is a 100-bar simple moving average. It's one of the tools I use. Is it's you know it's not hard. Is going sideways. What does that say? That says the market is non-trending. The, the the market profile told me about non-trending, and it's also told me that non-trending leads to trending type markets. And when you when you have a non-trending market. You're anticipating again. We get to we or we start to get to that word anticipating that that uh, Gonzalo talked about in the introduction. That traders can anticipate trends. You can, and it's not un, it's not a crystal ball. All right, it's 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 called putting the odds of success in your favor and and analyzing the market in a logical way. Let me, let's take, I like to take, and in the book I do, I do this as well, I take the trader outside of the markets and I put him into some real world type scenario. And one of, and I like to use sports as an analogy. I like to use, you know, small businesses or, you know, businesses, uh, 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 corporations as an analogy. Imagine your Apple, okay? And what does Apple do? <coughs> Excuse me. It anticipates what the consumer wants. 
I imagine that at Apple, in some developmental room where they sit around a big long table and they have a big whiteboard there, someone wrote the word in big block letters, anticipate. Anticipate what the customer wants. A tablet PC has not, is not, was not new, but it was new when Apple bought it out. It would, it took a, you know, a IBM or ThinkPad or whatever tablet and it made it, it made it simple moving average. It made it, it, it anticipated that the customer didn't want just to have this bulky thing. They wanted something light. Well, duh. It, it, it anticipated they wanted a bigger screen. It anticipated it needed apps. It anticipated, and, and all these apps would be able to, you know, come together over time and, and create this critical mass where everyone needs to have one of these things because it, it, it is, not only not just you know sexy, but it's useful. It's useful in everyday life, whether you're going to the store or whatever. You know, you can carry it along with you. You can carry it to the ballpark. You can carry it to school. You can do whatever you want. I know people who are trading in their laptops. Their laptops don't work anymore. This is like you know uh, normal people, not not traders. I wouldn't necessarily go and mis use use anything other than PC to trade. But people who are trading in their laptops in order to get get the, and getting a get an iPad in, in, instead so they they anticipate what the user wants and that's what you have to do as a trader anticipate use tools like the 100 bar moving average going sideways as a way to anticipate a trend use tools the market's non trending going back and forth i draw these horizontal lines in here these are what, what i call remembered lines they're outlined in the book you're not going to see it in any other book i call them remembered lines the market remembers these levels it remembers uh, this level in between here. We know that these levels, this, this floor and this ceiling, but there's other levels in between here where the market doesn't trade. It goes below it. It comes back above. It moves below it. It comes back. It uses the support. breaks below it. moves moves above. comes back to it. These are remembered lines within this non-trending range where the market goes back and forth, back and forth. It's a battle. It's a battle. And so non-trending then transitions into a trending type market. Key. You anticipate a trend by seeing a non-trend. If you can see a non-trend, you start to look for a trend. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, we can anticipate a trend because the 100 bar moving average is going sideways by definition. Did you know that yesterday? You know, maybe some people did, maybe some did, but you're aware of it. That's what the book tries to do, makes you aware of these things. And people are saying, well, what, what about this point right here? The market should have gone higher. Yes, it should have gone higher, and it did. It broke above the ceiling. It went boom, 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 and it went higher. But part of trading is um, what I call the if should rule. If the market breaks a ceiling level at this point, the market, you know, imagine you're looking at this right here. We're going higher, folks. We're going higher. And I was I was on the bull bandwagon right here at this point right here. The market was heading higher. But what you have to realize is that in order to go higher, that's step one. Uh, you're above the 100 bar moving average. You move above the ceiling. Um, we, you start to look for targets down the road. Targets are, allow you to um, uh, keep the trend going. They keep you bu bullish. And, and the target isn't 152. It's not 153. It's the next key level off something like the daily chart. And here the market was breaking to the upside on the daily chart. And we're moving above the um, the trend line here. This is that, that the, the part on the hourly chart where the market broke. We need to get above this 149.66 uh, level. This, this goes back a, a, a long time, uh, 149.66 to this part right here where the market found some ceilings, found some floors, moved above and below the 66 level. We had to get get to this 151.45 uh, 45 level back in time. When the market couldn't do that, when the market broke below this trend line, when the market broke below uh, this uh, move back, into the range here, broke below the 100 uh, simple moving average, broke below the 200 and the floor here at this point. What was it saying to you? Anticipate a trend, folks. Anticipate a trend the other way and get on board. Attack that trend. Attack that trend to the downside. So long story short, you know, that we, we kind of talked a little bit about the market profile, but that that became a backbone. That that market profile became a backbone for me thinking about markets in terms of different um different um uh types of types of markets non trending trending and then you have your normal normal markets where the market is going to consolidate uh, correct higher 
um, you know, this might be a, a, a normal market. This might be, you know, a more normal corrective type move and markets correcting back up to the upside. So, um, the mar uh, here's Gonzalo. The market discounts our expectations, but not our uh, not our anticipations. Right? Um, correct. You know, it, it, you know the, the in, in this part right here. What is the market expecting? Quite frankly, this is in this type of market right here is where you turn on CNBC and Bloomberg, and everyone is is giving us their expectations of what the market might do. Is it going to go higher, or it's going to it's going to move higher? And oftentimes they'll be like, the euro is going to 160, the dollar is going to continue to get hit, or you get the other guys who are saying the euro is <coughs> going to. Uh, fall down, it's going to go back to 135 or something like that. They start to get really loud and they start chattering, chatter, 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 um, about their expectations of what might happen. My theory is this. The market is doing this because it doesn't know where it wants to go. It doesn't know what the expectations are. It's okay to not know. It's okay to not know. Don't get loud during the, this. Get quiet. Wear your best suit to work because, honey, I'm going to come home one of these days and this market is going to trend. And I'm going to get on that trend and I'm going to just follow the rules. Above the 100 moving average, bullish. Below the 100 moving average, bearish. Below the 200, bearish. Below the remembered line, the horizontal line, bearish. They're lining up, folks. I am. All I have to do is follow it. And if you can anticipate this trend, don't expect anything. Clear your mind of everything when you see this happening. Clear it and say, which way is the price going? Listen to, I like to say, listen to what the market is saying. And the market will talk to you, folks. It talks loud and clear. It talked loud to go long when we moved, when we checked off this low, moved above the 100 and said go long. But it told, also talked low, long, uh, told you to get out when we move back in this range. It said, take your profit, get out, let's, let's continue our anticipation of a trend, but let's wait. Let's wait until we get that, that, that break and the, con and the confirmation. So expecting something in, an, uh, in a, in a, in a non-trending market, don't do that. Instead, anticipate something and listen to what the market is saying. Open your ears, open your eyes, and look at it. And the thing about foreign exchange, folks, is that there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of traders out there. At FXDD, we have tens of thousands of traders. Now, add the other brokers out there, there's tens of thousands. Add the institutional traders out there. Um, that adds another whole layer of uh, traders out there. And all of you people are looking at the same thing. That's why we find these, you know, we get into this range, range, range. And guess what? Most of the people get, get mesmerized by this range here. And they start, they uh, and in the retail sector, and what they do is they start to sell high, buy low, sell high, high, maybe, you know, maybe trade in the middle, and 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 think about it. If you if you trade anywhere except for at these extremes the wrong way, you're gonna probably make a few pips here and there, and you get used to like, well, uh, you know, I'm, get, I'm making a few money here and there, and all that other stuff. But then what happens is you you uh, the market breaks lower, and what are the what do the retail traders tend to do? When the market breaks lower, they say, oh, well, the market's lower here. Um, I'm going to buy a dip. Why? Because um, I bought a dip here. I bought a dip here. I bought a dip in, in here. And every time, or, or here, I bought a dip here. I bought a dip here, and the market moved up. I bought a dip here, and the market moved up, and I made some money. So you get in this focus that you're going to, you, that what you have to do is buy a dip. And you buy a dip, and what happens? The market goes lower. And what do you do again? When the market hits this point, you say, Oh, it can't go any lower than this. I mean, this look how far we've gone here. It can't go any lower. And you buy a dip and it goes up 0.2%. Uh, you know, you don't get a Fibonacci retracement of this move uh, of 38.2. You can't even get 38.2. You, you get a fraction of, of this move re retracement. And one of the tools that I use is the uh, Fibonacci retracement. If you can't get to 38.2, then, you know, don't don't fight it, folks. And the market trends down, and so you end up end up selling or buying 
your way into blowing up your account all the way down. And that's why retail traders don't do well. They don't anticipate a trend. And that when the market does start to trend, they don't anticipate where we can go. I'm going to go to the, uh, the daily chart here and show you, uh, again, what I mean. Uh, look at this uh, trend to the upside here. What did we do here? We broke to the upside here out of this channel. By the way, uh, Forex market likes to uh, move in channels here. Channel, channel, up, down, up, down, up, up, break. Okay, bullish. You're not selling this uh, point. You may sell this point right here. Why? Because you can define your risk and the market uh, could possibly go down. But when it goes up, you get out, the market moves higher, higher, it stays above it. Look how it holds that trend line very nicely. And then this day it breaks below. That's the day we, we start to move to the downside. Where can you go? It's the bottom of the channel. You can go all the way down to 144.55. But what are retail traders? Oh, they're buying it right here. They're buying it right here. They're buying it right here. They're buying. And they get they get liquidated when the market breaks through the, through this level. Level. You can't do that. You got to recognize that this is significant. This is giving you a clue. This is where the market's talking to you out loud and saying, "Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. This is this, this correction could go a long way." And you start to anticipate. If you can anticipate a trend, you can anticipate that we can go right down to here. And we can go here and look where you can anticipate the market may go, the 100-day moving average. Where where can you anticipate the market to go first? 38.2% retracement. Where does it go? 38.2. It bounces up. It finds support. It consolidates around 38.2. What happens on on um, on Sunday night? The market opens up. Where does it go? 100-day moving average. 100-day moving average. Uh, I think they say the market talks to everyone in hindsight. Good point, um, but I, I would dis I disagree. Yes, I can sit here and show you that the market um, was uh, that the market um, went down and went right down to the hundred uh, day moving average. But believe me when I say I use these, these lines were in my chart, and um, in hindsight, uh, or it, um, what I am looking at um, is this, and what you have to start to look look at is this. The market breaks above this uh, trend line right here. What does that tell you about the market? Is it bullish or bearish? It's bullish, and the market should go high, higher here. What does it tell you when it holds this? It should go higher. What does it tell you when it holds this? It should go higher. What does it tell you when it breaks it here? You should not be long anymore. All right. And why? And what is your risk if you sell the market at this point, 147.83? What is your risk that the market goes up to the upside? This is another. Uh, theme of my book is that that if you use simple tools like trend lines and moving average lines and, and Fibonacci retracement levels, you have what I call border lines. Border lines where it tells you bullish on one side, bearish on another. Um, Gonzalo talked about uh, uh, this term unambiguous trading tool. All the tools that I use, and, and I just use three, Fibonacci retracements, trend lines, moving average lines, um, it is are all unambiguous, bullish above, bearish below. And that's, uh, that's a key, um, key uh, uh, part of my book. You don't want to use what I call ambiguous trading tools like a, um, a relative strength index, uh, which tells you overbought or oversold. Why? Because it, it, it doesn't tell you where your borderline level is. This line tells me that i, I got to be careful. I've got to, we're back within this trend after moving above this line right here. The market should go higher. It doesn't, it does, but it does, but it stops and it comes back down below that line. I have to be careful. When I can combine uh, what this daily chart is saying um, and uh, at this point right here, and, and let's just go back to this point right here, when the market breaks back in that line, when I can Combine that um, this this point right here on this chart at around uh, I guess it's 89 level, and take a look at the um, uh, hourly chart and uh, and recognize on the hourly chart what is it 140 140 uh, 147.89 147.89. So um, if I uh, put this uh, line at 147.89. Right here on the um, on the hourly chart, and I combine what I'm seeing on that daily chart with what I'm seeing on the hourly chart. The only thing you can do is look at the charts and interpret it. We just broke below the hundred uh, hour moving average. We just uh, went above our our well, it went right to our ceiling. There's another high right here. Our ceiling here, we failed. We broke below the 100-hour moving average, which is the same bearish. 
Uh, we broke below the 89 level, which is our trend line. Uh, we're now within the channel on the daily chart. And you know, if, if you want to wait to this final level right here, um, the, the, the evidence is pointing to sell at least below the 200-hour moving average. So in hindsight, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, the market ended up going down and going down fast. But what I'm saying is that all, all, all this move was was anticipated. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it's not curve fitting. Um, well, the market's already moved. In, but Greg, the market's already moved. In essence, you're curve fitting your lines. I'm not curve fitting my lines. This line was in here. This line is there. This 200-hour moving average was there at this point. This 100-hour moving average was there at this point. These lines have been in my charts since this whole non-trending started. So it's not curve fitting. That's what you have to do. You have to you have to draw and anticipate. Be aware. Be prepared. Understand that the market, these lines exist, and they tell you something. They tell you bullish above, bearish below. And if it goes below, that that tells you bearish. So. And if it depends on, on my strategy, yes, I mean, this is obviously my strategy. My strategy is focused on on anticipating a trend, attacking a trend, the understanding that non-trend uh, turns into trends and that there are levels of support and resistance where you have um, a bullish above and bearish below. And if you listen to what the market has to say uh, by by just looking at the price relative to your tools, you're going to be better suited for your trading. So I don't want to get an argument, but that's that's um, that's what um, that, that that that's it's not it's not hindsight; it's anticipating. Now, once you get into the the trade and the market starts to move to the down, downside, you have your entry level. Now you have to start to manage your trade. And one of the things that uh, that we that I know or, or that I follow is these Fibonacci retracements, and so this becomes another important tool within my uh, my toolbox and within within um, my um, my analysis within the book. Why? Because we know that markets trend, and we know that markets not uh, trend or correct, or non trend, or, uh, correct or non trend. And so when you get this move to the downside here, you're going to get a correction um, a correction that could take the market back up so I'm constantly trying to put in a Fibonacci retracement from a low from a high to a low and looking at where the market could uh, correct up to where are levels in the, in the past that the market uh, may, will have to target um, in order to really turn the bias from uh, uh, from bearish uh, back to bullish and so uh, you know I, I use I use things like you know old highs and old lows levels where the market took off from because the markets are very um, very visual. The markets will use old levels, these old remembered lines where the market uh, moved above this line, used it as support, then used it as support and fell below it, then used it as resistance, and used it as resistance and moved above it and fell below, and then used it as resistance here, moved above it, found support, and based to the upside. So this level becomes a, you know, a level that I, I would I would look to put on my chart to say, hey, I am short in this market. I need if the market moves above this level, I might be thinking about you know going long, or, or I may just use manage my risk and say if it goes above the 38.2 percent retracement, I'll get out. I use in lots and lots of trending markets, 38.2 percent retracement is a key resistance level. Is a level where the market um, where where the, the the players come in. Either they're going to push the market further to the downside, or they're going to um, and keep the trend to the downside in this case. Or they're going to, they're not there, and the market's going to move above that 38.2. And so you'll, see, you know, I, I manage these, uh, the trades by using the Fibonacci retracements, by using old levels, and start to see where the bias turns from bullish back to, or from bearish back to bullish, even in the shorter term, uh, term perspective. And I may also go to things, uh, to a five minute chart and look at the five minute chart and see, uh, what that is telling me. Um, in, in the book, I, I stress that you should, that trading, if you're, if it, even if you're a short-term trader, um, it's you don't you don't just pay attention to the five-minute chart or to the 15-minute chart or whatever chart you want to look at. I look at the five-minute. I look at the hourly. I look at the daily. And in the book, I I, I outline that um, uh, I discuss and outline that what you have to pay attention to is all three types of uh, all three charts. 
And why is that important? Even if you're an intraday trader, well, because on the daily chart um, in, in the euro versus U.S. dollar, the market found support against the 100-day moving average yesterday. It found support against the 100-day moving average here today. There was a reason to think that the market had a level um, where the market could find support. And some some people, again, may say that that's, uh, well, hindsight. The market ended up bouncing off of that level. But the difference here is that um, – is that it doesn't matter if the market bounces all that off that level or not. What matters here is that you're able to define your risk against that level. And that's one of the things where, you know, I talk about in my mission statement to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. If you can define your risk against a level, you can um, keep your risk to a minimum. If your mission is to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk, trade against levels that have meaning. Trade against the 100 day moving average and if if you are right the market will bounce if you are wrong the market will go through it and you'll lose a little bit of money you'll lose a little bit but the potential exists for you to make more more so what you have to do is is be able to uh, focus on these key borderline levels to do that but uh, from an intraday trade traders perspective knowing where the 100 day moving average is an important point point it's a it's more important than looking at the five minute chart at that point where the market hit the low yesterday this doesn't necessarily uh, tell you as much as uh, this uh, on the daily chart now um, you know I, I may also be able to say oh well um, well actually that's not, uh, good I don't know how it's gonna uh, uh, put out but uh, let me see here if I put a trend line uh, coming down uh, here off of these uh, highs then try to put a or put in a horizontal trend line there off that low, low to try to get a channel. You know we're getting closer to the bottom support of this uh, channel to the downside as well. So you have some indication that the market may have some uh, good support or coming down into support. And lo and behold, the market then that, that does start to start start to correct. Now looking at the market today. Um, these are my, my, my boundaries. I have a nice uh, support line. Um, I know that the 100 bar moving average has been uh, finding uh, support, right? Support here, support here. Moved a little bit below here to our, our floor and ceiling here. That's okay. Move back above it. Use support and market moved higher. By drawing these lines, by putting them in, in the charts, by understanding where the levels are, you know, or I know that, um, you know, the odds are that if the market comes down and tests this 100 bar moving average, this trend line, I can define my risk here. I can use the least amount of risk uh, in my trade. If I'm still bullish, I can buy the market. If it goes up, I, I have the mar uh, I, I move, I, I profit from that. If it breaks through this level, where is my target? I have to get to the 200. I have to head down to these lows right here, maybe to the, cl the close from yesterday. That's what you're trying to do as a trader. Put the odds of success in your favor by by uh, by using uh, these key borderline levels by defining your risk against the uh, key levels. Uh, okay, so um, the, the, the OB, okay, I traded the break of the trend as well. The trend was drawn ahead of time. Okay, so Mariano agrees with me. Uh, explain the if should rule. All right, uh, <clears throat> the if should rule um, is is this. It's a very very simple lo logical thing that brings discipline into a, a trader's uh, mind and focus. So uh, basically. The tools that I use, moving averages, trend lines, Fibonacci retracements, they all, again, have a, are, are unambiguous. Bullish above, bearish below. If the market price is above it, it's bullish. If the market price below it, below it is bearish. The if should rule says this, and it's kind of like if dot dot should rule. If the market breaks above the trend line, the, the price should go higher. Again, notice, if the market breaks above, the price should go higher. Um, if it uh, uh, If it doesn't, then get out. So if the market goes above the trend line, the price should go higher. There's really not only one choice that you have uh, to, to be long the market at this point. When the market uh, breaks through the trend line, um, or, or, or if the market doesn't do what it should do, then get out. So if the market fails in, in continuing to extend this move to the upside, you have to get out. And so it's a, it's a simple way. It's a way that you as a trader can remember that um, uh, um, Remember that to be disciplined, to understand that why did I put this trade on? Because the market broke above. Why did I take it off? Because the market should have gone higher. If it doesn't, then you want to get out. And so what you want, want to do is you want to get out of that position and maybe, and also if you're, if you're, um, you know, if you see 
that this market has trended to the upside. We broke to the upside, which is increasing the bullishness of this channel here. And if it can't um, continue that trend to the upside, you got to think in terms of the market selling off. In other words, this is my overbought situation that things like an RSI will, told, will tell you. If I looked at the RSI here, it was probably, and well, I could probably put it in here, indicator, uh, oscillator, uh, put in a relative, where is it? Relative strength index, 14, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> this market was overbought at, uh, when it went above 70 at this point right here, right here. It was getting overbought there. It was, it was still overbought here. It was still overbought here. It's still overbought here. What is my system telling you? It's saying get long. The if should rule says get long. This RSI is saying, the market's overbought. It made you your fear increase when the market continued its direction to the upside. And so my book outlines that you know that's not something that you want to focus on. You want to focus on this unambiguous trading tool that's going to tell you bullish, 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 even when the market's overbought. And at this point right here, it tells you bearish. And uh, you know eventually the RSI also goes down. And people say, well, you know, but. It's this part that increases a trader's fear and causes them to do things that they normally would not do. That, um, if you use an RSI, using a trend line, this allows me to use the if should rule. If the market moves higher, I want to be long or at least be square. Even if if I know it's overbought, maybe I don't buy the market. Maybe I just wait. I just wait. I don't sell it either because the market can go higher, and it does. And I just wait for this break to the downside. And that's the difference between overbought, oversold, and something that's definitive like a trend line. And, and that gives you, that allows you to use tools like trend lines and moving average lines and, and stuff in lieu of an RSI. You can always find, um, find another reason that's using an unambiguous tool that's going to allow you to define your risk, that allow you to keep your risk to a minimum, that's allow you, going to allow you to control your fear. If you can find, the, uh, the, if you can use a trend line instead of an RSI, use that. And there are plenty of opportunities to use a trend line, an RSI, remember line of, of, of Fibonacci retracement in your trading that will allow you to not have to focus on things like overbought and oversold condition. It also allows you to keep the charts more clear. Um, it allows you to keep things more simple. And if you use, the, if you uh, keep things more simple in your, your trading, I have a say, saying that you want to apply what is called the KISS principle. And the KISS principle is this, not keep it simple, stupid. It's keep it simple to be successful. And if you start to use simple things, simple visual things and allow you to focus on target levels, that allow you to say, oh, the market's oversold here. The euro's been coming down for uh, two weeks now. It's oversold. Um, well, there's a 100-bar moving average there. You can, If you want to buy it, buy it against the 100-day moving average. That that's, makes more sense to me than buying on an RSI, RSI and then seeing what happens. All right, uh, so uh, that helped you out. Uh, or Ashgar, did that help you? Yes. Nice, thanks. Okay. Um, Get any other questions here about the book or uh, any other questions that you have. Uh, 140 was a huge psychological level. Eh, you know what? Um, I, I don't really care. You know, I, I've, you know, 130 was a psychological level. 120 was a psychological level. 125 was a psychological level as well. What um, what a psychological level uh, does, Mariano, is, is this. Does it tell you that, um, well, well, does it necessarily mean that the price is going, you know, in, I mean, that's what I would consider a, well, it, it, it can be a borderline level, but it also can be a, um, a high, hindsight level. What you know is that you can lean against that one, one uh, actually 140, it was probably 150 level on the top side, right? Is that what you're talking about, 150 or down here at the bottom, at the bottom here? Well, 140 is a psychological level too, but, it, you know, the market still went down to the um, 68 level. And a lot of traders, when the market breaks the 140 level, what are you thinking? that the market's going lower. If you don't have the 100-day moving average on there, um, you, you might be selling at the 100-day moving average because we're below the, we're 33, 34 pips below, 33 pips below the 140 level, and you're starting to get scared, you're starting to get uh, worried, um, and, and as a result, you may be the guy that's selling to the guy who's buying against the 100-day moving average. Um, so, one, you know, 140 level, 
um, is a psychological level, but does that mean to you that above it it's bullish, below it is bearish, or does that mean to you I'll risk 100 pips to 139 or 32 pips or 40 pips? Where 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 do you draw the line at that 140 level? You see the difference. Um, whereas if you're you know and and I would um, if 140 is a psychological level, I would say that I want to be long above 140, 40, but I want to be short below 140. And uh, so I would I would be getting out at the 140 level, getting in at the one 140 level on the top side. Uh, so um, you know that's how I'd uh, uh, look at look at it. Um, anyway, um, I'm getting the word that um, we're running out of time here. I thank uh, the people at FX Street, uh, and hopefully I gave you a, a nice introduction uh, to the book about how. Um, I think I think Gonzalo did a great uh, summary of the book uh, for me. Let me um, let me offer a uh, special to those people who are in the room here today. Um, I do work for FXDD, uh, and FXDD has agreed that uh, if you are interested in opening up a an account with FXDD for you know any amount, um, um, you know two hundred dollars or whatever, um, we will. Uh, uh, give you a free copy or we will send you a free autograph copy of the book um, if you don't have it uh, yet yet um, and, and so um, in order to again I work at uh, www.fxdd.com uh, if you want to open up an account send me an email at um, greg uh, at fxdd.com and I will be happy to put you in touch with a sales representative who will be able to open your account up uh, and uh, we will also be able to uh, exchange um, uh, you can send me your address and I'll be and I'll be happy to send you a free uh, copy of my book attacking currency trends uh, dot com um, for um, so uh, that's uh, our offer today um, also if you um, uh, if you want to read more about the book um, you can go to attacking uh, currency uh, trends dot com Com, and uh, that will uh, give you uh, information about the book. Um, if you want to read reviews on the book, uh, click on this link uh, at Amazon.com. Uh, have a lot of uh, very nice um, comments, unsolicited comments for people who have read the book, uh, uh, who have uh, been uh, interested uh, in it or interested in it and found it to be quite useful. In fact, I think of all the foreign exchange books with uh, reviews. Uh, or, or comments of more than, you know, let's say, I don't know, five or ten or whatever. Uh, my uh, my book has the highest uh, rating uh, so far. I think it averages about 4.8 stars uh, versus five. So I'm very proud of that. Um, I, I hope that uh, this um, this program allowed you to get a feel for uh, what um, the book is about um, and why uh, you as retail trader need to be able to attack the trends and how you can uh, anticipate trends as well by just looking at some simple tools, things like moving averages, trend lines, Fibonacci retracement levels, uh, and uh, and FX Street also has a, a link to the book as well, and I appreciate uh, them using that uh, as well. So uh, bless uh, bless you all. Thank you all for coming in here today. Thank you, Moa. Thank you, uh, Vicky. Thank you, Adinda. Thank you, uh, Gonzalo. And um, good luck with your trading. Take care. Bye. All right. You, you will agree the discussion has been uh, highly instructive accepting to join the session and answer to our questions. Also, our sincere thanks to the great audience who has shown true interest and a uh, double trader's persistence by coming back to the room for the small crashes we, we experienced today. And um, I'll, repeat it, I will, I will repeat something I told you at the start of the session, uh, the book and the recorded webinars uh, Greg has done with us here at FX Street are, are, are complementary materials, and uh, it's a perfect combination you can take uh, advantage of. As for future sessions, we will, we will repeat the experience and uh, keep introducing you more interesting books. Uh, we will only select those books that we really read and think they are of, uh, of value to you as, as a trader. Thank you again, and uh, take care. Take care, and uh, see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.